Hi everyone, it's Lauren and today I'm going to talk about the books that I read in July. July was a really good reading month for me and I got so much read and I'm really pleased and I think mostly that is down to the fact that I had a couple of read-alongs scheduled with some other booktubers and so that really kept me going, it kept me on track and motivated to finish those books. So the first book that I buddy read this month was Saplings by Noel Stretfield. Noel Stretfield is known mostly for her children's literature, most notably ballet shoes and this is one of her adult novels, this is the only one in print at the moment I think and it follows a very middle-class British family from just before the Second World War and all the way through the Second World War and it's how the war pulls them apart and brings them together and changes them. What I found really odd about this book and I think a lot of other people um, reading it did as well is that this does really read very similarly to Noel Stretfield's children's work so it did feel a bit like you were reading a children's book but about adult problems. The way the story was structured was very compartmentalised like you kind of have um, oh there's a problem oh now it's got solved oh there's a problem now it's got solved which, which felt very much like children's literature the story arc was very odd it kind of went on and on and on and on and then it just stopped and you kind of thought that's that's weird <laughs> but apart from the fact that I felt the structure was a little bit off I actually really enjoyed the writing it just it was quite nostalgic for me because I loved reading her work as a child I did enjoy going back to that place like, when I would read this kind of literature and I enjoyed learning about the family and I think this was a really good one to buddy read because we were talking about it in so much depth in a way that I probably wouldn't have um, done if I'd just been reading this myself I think because I didn't do an English literature degree it's been ages for me since I've really I guess thought about a book or discussed it with people like the last time I did that was when I was doing my A-levels which is like oh my oh my god like nearly 10 years ago now oh. so we had lots of really interesting discussions about kind of gender roles and what it means to be a good mother and whether being a good mother means that you're a good person and what are the elements of being a good slash bad mother and, and, and parental roles in general and it was just a really interesting conversation and I'm glad that I um, had the chance to have that and I did really enjoy reading this book despite the structure being a little bit off but I think mostly it just made me kind of want to go and read ballet shoes so I don't know if that's a good thing or not. And then the next book that I read as part of a buddy read was Bonjour Tristesse by Francois Sagan, um, which I've lost because I was looking for it for this video and I don't know where it's gone, so yay! This is a really short novella and it is about a young girl, it's about 17, and her father, her mother has died and it's about her father's various different mistresses that he has and her relationship with him and his relationship with women and her relationship with all the different women in his life. This was quite an interesting book because none of the characters in it were very, very likeable at all, um, but I quite like books like that. I think mostly because I think they're almost the most honest books. I think really if you saw right inside other people's heads you would probably see that they were quite unlikable. Um, well maybe not everyone but I think certainly if you were 17 years old and you'd always been the apple of your father's eye and then he gets another um, girlfriend um, I think you would probably be quite selfish and quite spoiled and you know I think most people would be like that. I thought this book was fine, it didn't jump out at me as being anything amazing but it was good, I thought it was an enjoyable read and I probably would read more from her because I quite liked her writing style. My book that I've lost also comes with um, another short story written by her, A Certain Smile, so if I ever find my book again um, I would quite like to read A Certain Smile because she, I think there's something interesting, I'm pleased that I started reading her but yeah, it was fine, it was fine. And then aside from my buddy reads, I also read a number of books that have been on my TBR for a really long time, so I'm so pleased to finally get to them and get them off my get them off my list or get them in my brain. And the first one of those was Mr. Fox by Helen Oyeyemi. This is about an author called Sinjin Fox. It is about his wife and also about his imaginary uh, muse, I suppose, called Mary Fox, who it is, is there in his imagination, she's in his life, but also he puts her into his works of fiction, and it's kind of about, I suppose, how all three of those characters um, get along within each other. This was a really surprising book for me, I guess because I didn't really know what it was going to be like at all, and it's structured very, very oddly because Sinjin Fox is an author. It is written like lots of different short stories, and you don't know as you're reading it whether you're reading something that's true and happening, or whether you're reading one of his stories, or even if it is one of his stories, or, some, or maybe one of Mary's stories. And there's a lot of magical realism in there, a lot of short stories that kind of read um, very dreamlike, and then others that are a lot more naturalistic, so then you almost feel like, is this, is this true? And then you think, oh no, that must, that must be a story, because then that weird thing happened at the end. And it's just, I, I found it really delightful to read, I enjoyed all the going, thinking, where are we going to go next um, in this next chapter? And I would have liked a lot of those stories 
even if they hadn't have been part of this greater book, but as part of the book, they made a lot of comments, um, mostly on men's relationships with women and violence towards women and the idea of women in literature and telling stories and the importance of telling stories. There's just so many things. I still don't really know what it was about, but I, re I really enjoyed it and how it all linked together. Um, not all of the stories kind of worked. I think some of them weren't as accomplished, but and in general, as, a, as an overall book, I, I really liked it. One of the segments I particularly liked was about a boys' school where boys go and get trained to be very, very good husbands. So they learn that, like, their wives are always right, but they have to make decisions, and then they have to learn to be very affectionate to her so that they can be really good husbands and chosen by women. Um, and it, I, I thought that was quite funny. It was quite a nice um, twist on, like, the fin finishing school idea. Um, but they were all so different that you almost feel like, how do these link together? And I just really really pleased that I read it because I've just I had I don't know how someone could have described it to me so that I would know what to expect and I don't think I'm describing it that well now but I think you just got to read it um, and make your own mind up. At the same time as reading Mr Fox I was also reading Sputnik Sweetheart by Haruki Murakami. This wasn't the best idea because I feel like there are a lot of themes in Mr Fox that were quite similar to the themes in Sputnik Sweetheart so I think at some points I was getting confused but actually I think that gave me a really interesting um, perspective on both of the books because they kind of crossed over in some unexpected ways which was, was quite cool. This is about a young girl called Samire and she falls in love with an older woman and it's told from the perspective of her friend. I'm quite conflicted with this book because I quite liked a lot of the writing. I liked the elements of magical realism that are in it. I really liked when people were describing dreams that they'd had or they were describing um, things that had happened to them because in, in that way it was quite similar to Mr Fox that there were these little little sections about a certain person and I, I liked those those parts. But I think what I don't like about this book is its structure and that's not necessarily the book's fault. I just don't like this technique in general and that's when you have a nameless male narrator talking about a woman and it's in it's her, and it's her story but she's like this kind of manic pixie dream girl and he's kind of interpreting that and I don't like it because you don't actually get her voice and it's not actually about him it's about her and I just find it really odd especially because then she gets into a relationship with a woman it feels a little bit like a male fantasy of a lesbian relationship and that's not to say that there's like sex scenes in this because there aren't it's just almost like he's imagining oh probably lesbians think that and then writing it and I, I found it a bit odd that you weren't getting it from the actual main character's perspectives and I, I, it didn't feel that authentic to me I don't know if that's just me like maybe reading into it a little bit too much because other aspects of the book I really liked but I just found that structure a little bit problematic but I do want to try and read some of his other work I've heard Norwegian Wood is a really good place to start with Murakami as well so I feel like have this one and have that one and then sort of make my mind up and then I also managed to get to The Enchantment of Lily Dahl by Sarah Hispet um, and I love Sarah Hispet and I've been trying to read all of her literature so I'm pleased this is her second novel so it's kind of nice to sort of go back in time and see how her writing's developed. This is about a young girl called Lily who is studying to become an actor in a kind of small town America, I think like Ohio. I, I, I don't know, sorry, I don't know about American geography like at all. <laughs> And then a mysterious artist from New York like moves across the street from her and then it's kind of all about discover uncovering secrets and histories about people within that town and there's kind of themes of art and things of philosophy and mental illness and she is starring a production of Midsummer Night's Dream so it's very much about kind of dreams again it's very dreamlike July and also kind of the about being an actor and the lines between reality and fantasy so there's lots of really interesting themes in here the story itself I felt was a little bit muddled because it it had all these really interesting ideas and it's all kind of crammed in there but then at the same time it was also sort of a murder mystery like at the same time as it being sort of a very theme thematic I don't know if that's the right word but it, it, it just felt a little bit odd um, that that's the way she'd gone with it I think maybe it's just that it this is kind of one of her earlier novels and I, I think some of her later works do do a very similar thing and they just do it better so I, I enjoyed it but I don't think it was as good as some of her later stuff I actually do think this would be a good place to start with Suri Hisfet this or what I loved which is the one that I started with because it kind of 
gives you an idea of the kind of stuff that she talks about. The Blazing World was her most recent one. I really, I really, really love The Blazing World, but it's, it is tricky. It's a difficult novel to read. It's very, very ambitious. This is much more kind of normal fiction. It almost lulls you into a full sense of security that it's just about small town America, and that's what it's about. And it's about more than that's kind of deeper underneath, which, which I really enjoyed. So probably like another three star-ish kind of read for me, but I think that's probably only because I've read some of her later work, so I'm kind of comparing it to that. And then the last book that I read in July is probably my favourite book of the year so far, which is The Burst Eye by Toni Morrison. Thank you to everybody who's recommended this to me. I am so pleased that I finally read it. I knew before I read this that a lot, a lot of people loved this book and a lot of people said that it was very, very important and kind of devastating. And in my head, I thought that was going to be because, you know, maybe the messages of the story were very, very important um, and it kind of made you see things from another point of view and it was going to be that kind of book. Um, it is that kind of book, but what I didn't realise was that the language itself was going to be so beautiful and the storytelling technique just so brilliant. And that's partly my own expectations, I know, going into it and the fact that I was pleasantly surprised, which is why I loved it so much. But it was just, it was just beautiful, that's all I can say. On the surface, it is about an 11-year-old girl called Bacola who really wants to have blue eyes because she feels that she is ugly, and if she had blue eyes, she would look like all of the white children, like Shirley Temple, and she would be loved, and her life would be better if, if only that she had blue eyes. However, it's also about her parents, it's about kind of the wider black community in America at that time, it's set in the 40s, but also about the more subtle issues that interlink with race relations. It's never solely about race, it's also about poverty and class and the women's place in the world and sexual politics and it's just, it's devastating for me in the way that the colour purple is that you see these characters who want to get out of their lives and you just think there are so many reasons why you can't get out of this horrible life that you're in. And so not only did I find the messages of the novel uh, very, very moving and very, very meaningful, I also found the language so wonderful that I'm really looking forward to read more of um, Toni Morrison's work. And that's such a joy. I love finding a new author who I read something and I just think, oh, I love this, I want to read everything you've ever written. And that's what happened with The Blue Eyes. So this has been a fantastic July, um, had some really good, Com literary conversations with people, found some books that I really enjoyed and ultimately read six books which for me is really really good so thumbs up all round this month. So there you go that was my wrap up let me know what you guys have been reading in July and if you've read any of these as always I'd love to hear your comments and I will see you in my next video. Bye! There we go, I think they're really smart, these little black classics, and I think it's a lovely excuse to have short stories or poetry or essays that people normally wouldn't read, and it's just nice to think, oh, I can collect them all, they're only 80p. Um, and I was, I was